Hello, I'm Bella Donna and I welcome you to our Femacult Garden. Today I'm talking with our lovely uh, seedling Oleander. Uh, we've just put a tiny Femacult logo over your surname now, so <laughs> I hope that by GDPR it's okay for you. Guys are already okay. chatting us. Uh, I have to tell you guys that Oleander will not see your questions. I will have to tell her if you chat us something in the chat, uh, but definitely ask us anything about astrology and about Maybe also like how is it to be our seedling in our Femacult uh, project and so on. Um, but uh, they were just texting like, oh, GDPR, GDPR. <laughs> we are spoiling your name. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we have your first question. How are you today? So how are you today, Olander? <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Also a bit nervous, but fine. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And uh, then uh, here's uh, Adele. So hello, everybody who's here with us uh, now. So I believe that we can slowly like start uh, somehow a little bit more officially. We are now uh, streaming a little bit from different countries that the, than the Femocult comes from, because uh, you probably know that Femocult comes from Czech Republic. And uh, I'm living nowadays in Germany while Oleander lives in Ireland where we actually originally met. So I was actually thinking that we maybe because um, we used to make some uh, interviews for my YouTube channel before for my personal YouTube channel and uh, so we know the drill like I'm asking questions she's answering and we are creating the video and uh, to give a lot of information but uh, I believe that this kind of format of uh, the Twitch stream is a little bit more um, relaxed, chatty, and so on. So I was thinking that we could actually start with just introducing how did we met each other. So do you remember actually where? Oh, I think I do. I think that was um, one ritual in Cork, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but Maybe I so. can't remember which one. I think I attended two, two or three. I, I, don't, I also don't know like which one of the year wheel of the year yeah. was it i know that i saw you on the one that was um in the autumn i think it, it was something like you know about light and dark and kind of uh, deciding what you want to do for the next half of the year mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we planted like a small sunflower seed oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. planting the sunflower seed yeah. you remember yeah, I yeah, I, I remember this kind of this part, but I also don't know which ritual was it. I also don't know in which place was it held uh, because it was moving so much around and I was living there for a few years. So there was a loads of places that we visited as a, as a kind of a coven or a visitors of the coven. Yeah, but yeah, we, we've actually met uh, through a lovely well of wisdom uh, connection through this uh, ritual group yeah it was it was it, those were like really really amazing times and i know i just remembered that then uh, the other day you just came to my working place do you remember that one oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was just so funny <laughs> uh, oh, that just... my favorite places <laughs> <laughs> Oleander just came to visit me uh, to my working place and I was uh, like talking to customers a lot there and uh, my colleague just called me over and was like the lady is here for you and I just turned on her and I was like yeah well so what can I do for you little customer <laughs> and she's like hi we know each other you know <laughs> And I think you had like a ponytail or something. There was something different with your hair. And I recognized you immediately when you talk, when, when I heard your voice. <laughs> I, I remember that. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> that, was, that was really funny. Yeah. So that's, that's how we've met. We've met in Cork in Ireland. And uh, then we both moved to Germany, actually. Yeah. Yes, but the opposite parts. So we unfortunately <laughs> never met in Germany. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I live by Dusseldorf and uh, you lived by Munich? Uh, yeah, Munich? In Munich? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere Bayern ish. Those those places far, far away. <laughs> it's like yeah. Czech Down versus there. Moravia. <laughs> <laughs> Down there. <laughs> Down there. Down the road. Okay, yeah, well, so that's how we've met. And uh, then we started to chitty chat about astrology a lot, a lot. Uh, and. 
more and more yeah and uh, we kept texting and we kept making videos together and then uh, when uh, femacold was uh, created i was just i was 100 percent sure that uh, i would like to ask you if you would like to write for us as well about astrology yeah and then there's this another point which i should have say maybe on the very beginning that actually you're not czech you're not czech speaking you're you're croatian is it croatian yes. in english croatian croatian yeah yeah so yeah so this way you kind of became our first seedling so today officially <laughs> i present you with our very first uh, seedling oleander uh, who actually has also articles uh, in our book uh, so and now kindly continues uh, with us through the next year how was it actually for you last year when you were uh, <laughs> when you were writing uh, about the about the astrological events uh, versus this year when uh, you are a bit more focused on like some specific uh, parts of astrology or uh, planets actually do you feel some kind of difference yes so last year well actually first year when i started to write for femme occult and i was writing about transits that were happening i mean first of all that year was kind of eventful with with transits and uh, it was significant significant year um, and that uh, just the fact that I was writing articles about it made me more observant and more focused and I just looked more into it it became a little bit of a habit while now this this year I am focused on some other topics so I'm kind of not that much focused on the transits and yeah it is it is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so like last year, there was always something uh, happening and this year is not that busy. Uh, well, it, not that much. I think mm -hmm. like last year was a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little <laughs> bit, just, just a little bit, just, just a little bit from astrological perspective, like, you know, those planets, <laughs> like they are floating around millions of years. So that was just, just a little bit. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it was a unique definitely <laughs> from a psychological <laughs> point of view. Um, and this year we only have, well, not only we, but like from these heavier aspects, we have like mm -hmm. the square of Uranus and Saturn. Mm -hmm. And that will be happening like uh, basically the whole year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're writing about uh, Uranus from, for the summer issue. And you are mentioning their Saturn as well. So people can, even though it's a more like a general perspective or applicable for yeah. every it's single more, year, then you, you can see there that kind of difference between those two. Yes, I think I kind of focused uh, a lot on Saturn last year. Mm -hmm. There was an article about Saturn Pluto conjunction, Saturn in Aquarius, mm -hmm. Saturn Jupiter in Aquarius. So there was a lot of Saturn and mm -hmm. this year it's more in depth on Uranus and some other planets. Mm -hmm. Is Uranus a little bit more uh, like um, open, free? Because I could like feel like Saturn is a structure and uh, it's some kind of uh, the old general and uh, he is holding the time and is saying, oh yeah, it's time and uh, it has to be like this way, second by second. And uh, is, um, and Uranus, I know it a little bit or know him a little bit uh, in, comp uh, in, um, in some kind of way that uh, is more full of freedom. But in the same time, it's one of those outer planets already and uh, it has uh, again that kind of heavy impact as well or like a long term long time impact uh how do you view uranus is it more for you free-spirited or just like behind the time beyond the time since it's more far than saturn okay uh, so uh, first i want to say that uh, one other impact that Femocult had on me is that it definitely enri enriched my practice and understanding of planets and astrology. Like every other activity or gaining knowledge 
has that, that impact. Um, so my view of Saturn changed with the mm -hmm. last year, actually last couple of years, it was changing, but last year, definitely there was some more insight and in, in like a relationship to that also my view of outer planets shifted a little bit. So maybe before I would say, oh yeah, Uranus is about, you know, changes, unexpected uh, events, and it's about freedom and rebellion. But now I am kind of um, more inclined to observe outer planet always in con conjunction with Uranus. So um, like always to observe it in relationship to Uranus because Uranus is like a gate to the outer planet. Mm -hmm. So we can't really just isolate Uranus and think about it in relationship to us, like how mm -hmm. it would impact us people without Saturn because Uranus can mean so many things and just as you said, it has such a long-term impact that it would be extremely difficult to like just pin it down to what kind of impact it has on a person without Saturn, which is actually putting it down to earth, so to say. So uh, I would say that, uh, sorry, just to answer actually <laughs> co co your question, I would say that every single outer planet it has more freedom, is more, let's say, you know, more free and then with Saturn, it's coming down to some sort of actual material reality. <laughs> Basically, every planet is a little bit more free than Saturn, isn't it? Maybe Pluto yes. has a little bit of that kind of halt as well, but it's more metaphysical, I would say. Yes. So today, stream is mostly about astrology. If you will have any questions uh, in the chat now, I believe that officially you can start asking us about astrological questions. And I have here a few of uh, those that we had uh, also on our Instagram. So I will just open it and I will check uh, what we had here. So I believe that the first one was uh, about the difference between different types of uh, astrology. So there was some kind of Vedic astrology versus traditional astrology. Um, I suppose that Vedic astrology is not very close to any of us. To, to me, I, I definitely am not uh, familiar with it that much. Yes, I'm also not very familiar with it because I mostly do Western. I actually. 100% do Western astrology and combination of traditional and modern. And that's because I kind of tend to use what is close to me. So mm -hmm. I work with what is uh, close to my background, you know, especially for astrology, because you kind of have to have some basic knowledge about culture, history, mythology, spirituality, religion, politics and all other kind of mm -hmm. things um, just to kind of connect all together and mm -hmm. it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit difficult to kind of have all that no necessary knowledge from all other parts of world and and cultures and and their histories and mythologies i believe that vedic uh, astrology same as astrologies from astrological systems from other parts of world mm -hmm. are valid and you know they that they work and that they are you know um proper but i'm using the one that is uh, connected to my background and that's western astrology mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah me me definitely too uh but there's still this kind of old version and the new version uh that uh, the old version is the one that you're using, I suppose. Uh, and uh, the new version is uh, operating with uh, the astrological signs, starting with the spring point a little bit uh, earlier and uh, also with uh, this uh, one extra uh, zodiac sign, that it's 13 signs, because that's basically how it is on the sky nowadays. But you're working with uh, basically the... Ar uh, archetypes that are connected to astrology for uh, thousands of years yeah. basically is it that that would be like psychological astrology mm -hmm. because recently um psychology 
kind of um, acknowledged the connection that it has with astrology, especially with the work of Carl Gustav Jung, which is um, mentioned in like every astrological book, I think in the last 50 years, definitely. Um, well, astrology developed kind of together with civilization, you know, in the ancient times, like people used to um, have only seven planets, right? Because they couldn't see anywhere past Saturn. Mm -hmm. So they were using what they knew and they connected it to what was their understanding and philosophy of the world. And then when we kind of developed as a civilization, when we introduced um, psychology, psychoanalytics, you know, understanding about ego, it collective unconsciousness and all of that and around the time you know rapid development of technology mm -hmm. changes in the world discoveries of new planets we kind of understood those new planets in relation to what was happening at the time and with these new discoveries so i'm working with that and mm -hmm. regarding 13th sign i uh, I personally don't know anyone who is actually working with that. I know one person, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe even two. Actually, I know two people, but I know so many people that... <laughs> I know definitely oh, much yeah. much more people who are uh, working with uh, this kind of more... Uh, older let's say type of uh, the setup of the planets uh, on the on the sky and um, it might be I, I hope that uh, one day it uh, will happen that we will be talking here together with you Oleander and also with Datura and that uh, three of us could take uh, a look uh, at, uh, at planets or on the planets from different uh, perspectives, uh, from your perspective as an astrologer, from my perspective as a witch, and from her perspective as a ceremonial magician who's actually working only uh, with uh, the original seven, uh, which are called planets, but uh, basically they are heavenly bodies because there's also sun and the moon, as well as in my practice and as well in your practice. But in my practice, I rather call it uh, or call them... Uh, heavenly bodies than planets even though i still kind of call pluto a planet even though he doesn't yeah, have this too. status anymore <laughs> and i think astrologers as well can't really get over this change no. maybe they will take him back one day <laughs> the scientists hopefully and then there will not be even more <laughs> uh, mix and uh, mixed up ideas from these different uh, approaches uh, i have here some questions from adele if i may continue with those because she's actually still interested uh, in more uh, about uh, uranus and uh, she asks uh, will this planet impact us more throughout throughout uh, this uh, year uh, what energies uh, can we recognize that will come from uranus and uh, how to work with it properly and uh, what's good to remember so how to be prepared for uh, uh, this year uranus wise okay so uranus is still in taurus um, and that is the place where he does not feel very comfortable if i may use that sort of language uh, because Taurus is traditional sign and it's a slow sign and Uranus is the planet which represents everything opposite of that, they are not really a um, comfortable combination. And the changes that we could see so far since Uranus entered Taurus, mm -hmm. for example, are changes around money because Taurus, Venus, you know, that's kind of possessions and values and uh, also monetary values. So we could see, um, for example, cryptocurrencies becoming very popular and skyrocketing, really. Then we could have seen um, some events happening on the Wall Street as well that did not happen before, but I'll come back to that in relation to this year um saturn uranus sorry well um how to work with the energy of uranus is basically to 
embrace unexpected, which is, I know I'm realizing very bad advice because it's really difficult to do that. <laughs> it's kind of going with the flow, but it can be extremely frustrating and we are not really used to behave like that in real world because we live in a world that is Saturnian mm -hmm. as much as it can be. We are all ruled by time. You know, you work nine to five or you get up at this time, you do that at that time. You have this amount of money at the bank account. This costs this much. The bills mm -hmm. are coming that time in the month. So we are all bound by these borders and Uranus is kind of breaking them in mm -hmm. a way. And that can be experienced as extremely stressful situation, uh, something that feels outside of your control and the way to deal with that, well, I, I think that's kind of opportunity to grow, you know, it's opportunity mm -hmm. to develop how you will deal um, with situation like that. But it will not, first of all, it will not impact everyone. It will, it is always useful to observe transits. If you have your conjunct sun ascended or forming aspect to some of your inner planets, of course, you will feel it more, more uh, stronger than, for example, somebody who doesn't really have Uranus transiting anything important in the chart, they will have to wait for their turn. Um, regarding this year, as I mentioned, we have Uranus um, square Saturn and Saturn is in Aquarius now, which is traditionally the placement of uh, Saturn's domicile. So Saturn is in a better position, we can say, than Uranus, even though Uranus is modern ruler mm -hmm. of Aquarius. Uh, but they are in square, so they, there is definitely a struggle. And this struggle, I think we can already, we already know what it is about, okay? Our lifestyle have changed. We definitely are living completely different life than two years ago. And that is something that was not expected and that is still new to us. There are restrictions put on us. Um, we are required to like adjust to the new situation uh, but I, what i personally see maybe a little bit challenging with this square is that saturn in aquarius actually would prefer more um moving forward and that's that's kind of like um new rules new mm -hmm new laws, new ways, new Routines. borders, if you want. Yeah. While Uranus in Taurus is kind of want struggling with this tradition, struggling with this old mm -hmm. ways. And I could see that on the example that we talked about, you know, with the Wall Street and what happened with GameStop. Uh, for the ones who maybe don't know just shortly, what happened is that a group of uh, people on the internet, basically gamers and people on the forum got together and decided to, uh, let's say, take over guys from the Wall Street. And they kind of, I would say, succeeded in, in that, definitely succeeded in sending the message and, you know, making the front news for like a couple mm -hmm. of weeks and uh, costing billions of dollars to some companies on the Wall Street. But why is this significant and connected to Saturn and Uranus in Taurus is because, again, we're talking about uh, values, money, and rules of the game. And that is what has been challenged in a way that has not been done before. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Uranus in Taurus would be these Wall Street companies that thought that they can, uh, you know, continue with the old ways. And Saturn and Aquarius would be the group that actually challenged the status quo and the conflict that happened um, would be, in my opinion, a reflection of the square. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And w when did uh, that square happen? When did it? Uh, well, because the both planets are kind of slow moving. Actually, the exact exact um, square was this week, but it's going on. It will be going on for like entire year and. It was, we can say, for the last couple of months was also, it could be felt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, that was definitely quite a peak of uh, interesting uh, energies. Do you think that uh, there's also some kind of uh, 
connection of uh, these well you wrote it in uh, your last year's articles it was uh, incredible because of uh, you wrote an article and uh, even though it was printed two months later when uh, the event already happened uh we were like thrilled we were like oh wow and she wrote about it month or two months ago and now it's happening what you were writing about and uh it was um uh, uh precisely it was uh black lives matter uh i know that you were basically writing exactly about that and then it happened and as well of course uh, the worldwide pandemic situation you just matched it totally in one of your articles and uh, um, I know that Datura was texting me or texting in our group chat like hey girls look at this look backwards to this article uh, I'm reading it now again before it goes to the print and just look at that it's exactly what's happening to us the restrictions and so on and uh, that was more connected uh, to such so you uh, view it in the way that uh, Uranus in Taurus is uh, rather trying to stay with the old ways while the, while the Saturn in, in Aquarius brings the new paradigm or Uranus in Taurus is already struggling with all way, old ways but still kind of keeping yeah. it because of for sake of having it having the routine. Yeah I think there's like more than one struggle going, going on here but <laughs> I, what is happening like on, on a bigger view, I think is like moving one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. Like the, the feeling overall is that like the, something has to change and it has to be new and it has to be moving forward. And some old ways simply have to be left behind, but there is a resistance to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I will check for another question that uh, we've got here and uh, I'm afraid that, uh, yeah, I had his, I uh, had uh, here this uh, kind of idea of talking about the current trends uh, in uh, astrology that uh, when you meet somebody or when you check someone's Instagram, you immediately see there like, I'm a sun a Taurus and uh, Leo ascending and uh, then I have moon in Gemini and that just describes my whole personality so that was kind of my idea which I would like to take uh, out and uh, talk about if uh, this really describes a person to you or like if you see it just as a trend as an astrologist and then we had the question as well about uh, the retrogradity of the planets what it is actually and uh, why is it so popular nowadays so it's uh, as well uh, some kind of um, some kind of idea that is uh, rather I'd say connected with uh, what uh, is uh, the online world focusing now on what is uh, in among um, everyone who just sniffs uh, the astrology a little bit so what uh, do you think uh, you may start with uh, one or the other <laughs> one it's up to you <laughs> okay um, let's start with popular astrology mm -hmm. um, I heard a really good comparison that somebody much wiser than me said but I completely agree and it's like comparing stuff like that you know written on Twitter or Facebook or wherever and and like astrology is like comparing uh, comic books to Shakespeare you know you can still get some insight and some information and you can get maybe some truth and wisdom in a comic book but it is just maybe one dimensional in comparison mm -hmm. to how it could be and what it really encompasses like i see this sun in taurus moon in gemini ascendant in leo um as a way of trying to maybe communicate to other people mm -hmm. what you understand that you are, how you understand that you are, and find some sort of common language that they understand you, you understand them, and there is this sort of connection. I think the same is going with uh, another trend that is very popular, and that is like personality, 16 personalities. Mm -hmm. um, it's crazy popular even with my friends, and... Uh, 
everyone, almost everyone I know of took the psychological test that has more than 200 questions and is sorting you into one of 16 personalities according to characteristics. Um, and some people are saying, oh, this is a sort of like astrology or even better than astrology, but it's still like if you say I'm an introverted personality, you're not saying, you know, everything about yourself. Not even everyone are introverted 100% of the time, all the time. <laughs> okay, so we are back in <laughs> here <Okay>. together <laughs> with uh, one extra speaker who wants to talk to my microphone uh but uh i hope it will be okay with you guys uh for uh, just uh, for today uh adele was texting us meanwhile that most of the time everybody writes about mercury when it's retrograde um i think that we were talking about it sometime before also uh, when we were chatting together uh during last years but uh, is mercury in some way special or is it just because of he's so close to us that he has like a bigger impact in that retrograde way <laughs> and what it actually is the retrogradity because i think that that was the basic uh, the start of the question about okay um so to start with that a uh, retrograde movement of the planet is basically an illusion that happens in the sky because that because of orbit of every planet which has different um, different uh, size and the planet is moving with different speed. So in of course our solar system, the sun is in the middle and the planets move around it in order. You know, Mercury first, Venus, and so on. But in astrology, we take Earth as the center point. And I have already heard, oh, that makes it, you know, <laughs> incorrect. Um, incorrect in the astronomical sense, yes. But since astrology is dealing with everything that is happening on Earth and to people, it kind of makes sense to put it at the center of this system. So when you observe from the point of Earth movements of the planet, they sometimes appear to, let's say, walk back or to have a re retrograde walk uh, because some of them are moving faster but with a smaller, a smaller uh, orbit and some of them are much slower. So Earth, when it's moving around the Sun and it's going faster than the other planets, you, let's say from the Earth, you know, you kind of see the slower planet going back at some point. And with the faster planets like Mercury and Venus, because they have smaller orbit around the sun, also when they are kind of, you know, they already made their circle and Earth is, Earth is somewhere here and they, they go like this and to us it looks like they're moving back. So basically planets don't literally stop in the middle of universe and just turn and go back. It just looks like that from our point of view. But for astrology, our point of view is like all that matters. So we take it as retrograde and we addressed um you correct we talked about mercury retrograde in one of your videos but since then also i kind of um developed maybe my point of view on that a little bit um i am very reluctant now to say anything in astrology is good or bad um so with retrograde planets i know that they have this um um reputation of being bad but for example saturn or pluto going retrograde is that it, it can be maybe even a better option than if they direct for example if they're having some sort of very challenging aspect in the chart or a transit or something it, well they're not going with like full force on you you know they are a little bit more with drone and also if you observing from a psychological point of view they are they are basically showing that everything is happening more inwards you know the plan the planet is going back so you are more with drone and all these maybe changes and challenges the challenges are actually happening on some sort of inner level more than maybe as a concrete exact event happening in your life and with Mercury retrograde, I think that Mercury is just kind of the planet that would want to be talked about. And that's why everybody's like, oh, Mercury retrograde. But I have a question. I actually, I'm really interested since now we all in this, um, 
lockdown, global lockdown, and there's no traveling and schools are closed and traffic is much, you know, easier than before. And all of that, I wonder, do, do people really complain about Mercury retrograde? Like, do, does it really affect us that much that I don't know, you know, I mean, how? <laughs> Only if like internet breaks down, but that wouldn't be only Mercury retrograde. Uh, well, with uh, Mercury retrograde, we were actually talking about it just in our last stream that was in Czech language, uh, because of there was a lot of there was a load loads of uh, technical difficulties, and mm -hmm. uh, due to that, we said, oh yeah, that will be Mercury retrograde. That's uh, to Datura who just joined us. Um, and uh, she also texts us that she actually see a spike in postal trouble too during metro Mercury retrograde. So mm -hmm. now we are, I, I can feel that we are much more connected online and we are much more connected uh, over the post that plenty of people started like shipping gifts and everything basically, ordering clothes and on ordering books oh, instead okay. of going somewhere. And uh, there might be struggles in those. And actually uh, with the, I'm not sure if it's Mercury retrograde because I'm one of those people who are not much into retrogrades and reversed cards and all these re things are not much my stuff. Uh, but I realized that uh, during last two weeks, uh, anything that was coming to me to Germany went through the customs. Mm -hmm. Was it from uh, America or United States? Uh, was it from England, uh, Great Britain? Or was it uh, from Czech Republic? It uh, doesn't matter from where and what are the kind of shipping rules normally, but everything went through customs. So maybe it's a Mercury retrograde <laughs> as well. And it will get a little bit more loose again uh, at some point. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, from my the point, point of, yeah, from, sorry. Good. The point with post is very good. Actually, I completely forgot about it. But yeah, that's correct. Um, delays in post and delays in general. Yeah, that, that would be symbols of retrograde mm -hmm. moving of the planet. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you as well. Um, I just um, realized this uh, little question because uh, my case, and I believe that uh, case of loads of people, who are in my age, is uh, that uh, my Uranus is actually retrograde. So when Uranus is retrograde, uh, how are my chances and odds for this year? Do I have like better chances with uh, Uranus be being in some kind of like a not happy position or is it worse, even worse for me? Or will it be more happening like inwards inside of me than uh, in my outer world? Um. Your way when you say your Uranus, you mean your natal Uranus, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's in the Capricorn or yeah, Capricorn. Uh, mine is actually in Sagittarius, okay, okay, then. But well, you, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that explains <laughs> a lot. Now, I, I saw that smile that was like, oh, now I know why she's like this. It's not only her Leo ascendant. Um, no. <laughs> mm. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so um, I think that you might still be affected by Uranus just because of your sun position. And if mm -hmm. like you, if the Uranus is close to your sun or if there will be some sort of transit or something, definitely you will feel it. And then, you know, keep me updated <laughs> how it's going. Um, but with uh, retrograde natal Uranus, um, I wouldn't say, you know, because it's such a collective generational outer planet, it's more describing uh, things that are happening, you know, on a global level or how a situation mm -hmm. was in those years when you were born and generation, your generation and, you know, uh, other people who are born maybe a couple of years before or after you. It's more describing... Um, it's it's just not so personal so mm -hmm. like with outer planet being retrograde yeah it would reflect more internally maybe not so much in outside events mm -hmm. even though it can be outside events but then it would be like something that affects the whole country or the whole generation of, of people not just you personally but what will definitely affect personally anyone is if the uranus goes transits the personal planet so sun moon ascendant point venus mars mm -hmm. yes you will definitely feel it and 
kind of that is that is uh, the point that is the period where you can maybe work with this energy or you can work on yourself or you can uh, work on some project that would be connected to energy of Uranus or something like that. I would put more emphasis on the transit mm -hmm. than on the natal position, especially because Uranus takes, I don't know, 84 years to go around and come back and mm -hmm. for you to have like Uranus return or something. I would put more emphasis on the transit than on the, you know, na natal position being retrograde or mm -hmm. direct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I will just uh, add the information that uh, the transit basically means that uh, since now Uranus is in uh, Taurus, uh, if you have Sun in Taurus or Moon in Taurus or Ascendant in Taurus, these three are the or Venus in Taurus and or those like very close planets uh, in Taurus, then Uranus will affect you probably a little bit uh, more than uh, people who have uh, these uh, planets and heavenly bodies and points in um, any kind of other uh, sign. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm understanding an astrology a little bit <laughs> since I have <laughs> here the Ole Oleander friend for several years <laughs> teaching me uh, step by step. Okay. Well, um, I have to apologize uh, to everyone that uh, today's stream will have to slowly end because uh, our little one, unfortunately. It's uh, not uh, getting better. Uh, hello, Ben. You just uh, came for the very, very last minute. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully we will see each other uh, again. And uh, also with uh, Datura, so we can all three of us talk about uh, the planets and their impact in uh, different kinds of uh, occult magical practice actually uh yeah and thank you very much Olander, that you joined us uh, for today's stream we will definitely have uh, the recording also on our youtube and uh, thank you everyone in the chat to for uh, coming uh, to our fem occult garden tonight and uh, have a lovely evening thank you okay bye bye